Lecture number six, what caused the Great Depression and how did the United States, France, and Great Britain, France, Britain, and Scandinavia recover? Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is the new democracies, then the Great Depression, and then the recovery. So um, after uh, the Great War in Europe, there was a lot of uh, democracies introduced to European countries. Most European countries were monarchies, uh, for example, Germany had a monarchy, England had a monarchy, and what they started to do is move away from these monarchies into, especially in Germany, a coalition type government. Remember the Kaiser had abdicated, and political parties in Europe work together. They don't actually uh, have into, like one party in control like we have here. They have to form together. Now when you have uh, basically like the Democrats and Republicans have to work together to be leaders, they're in a coalition where they're working together, they're going to struggle with crises. And the German government was called the Weimar Republic. And this was the government of Germany after the Great War. Uh, let me add that right there. Germany, Great War. And they were very unpopular due to the Treaty of Versailles. And they had major problems due to reparations. Remember, reparations was uh, money that you had to pay back to France and Great Britain. And the way they dealt with their money problems, because they didn't have enough money, was they would print more money. Now, when you print more money, this creates hyperinflation. Because the more money you print, the less value your money has. It's kind of like when uh, I was in high school, um, it cost $5 to go to the movie theater. Today, when you guys are in high school, it costs $11. It's the same movie ticket, but because of inflation, the, the price has gone up. And we have hyperinflation. And here's a picture of a woman in Germany burning money to stay warm because the money was so worthless it was cheaper to burn the money than to buy wood. Um, so we've got to figure out a way to do this, to fix this problem. And uh, let me move that up here, right here. So they come up with the Dawes plan in the United States and the U.S. gave two and a half billion dollars in loans to Germany. The Germans paid two billion dollars in reparations payments. And then the Allies, the France, the French and the British, they paid 2.6 billion in war debt payments to the U.S. So as long as the U.S. is funding everything, it is making everything much cheaper. Um, so this is the German plan. This is the U.S. plan to help with uh, Germany with hyperinflation. So what happens is the next thing that happens is we, as a country, we decide to uh, remove warfare. And the Kellogg-Briand Pact. This was the pact to remove warfare. And we say we're not going to use warfare as a form of national policy anymore because the great war was so horrible. But unfortunately, there's no way to enforce the treaty because the League of Nations was too weak without the U.S. Here's a political cartoon making fun of it where the League of Nations is a baby and uh, here is America ignoring its baby and Europe is pushing the baby, the League of Nations. Now the Dawes Plan and the Kellogg-Briand Pact are working fine as long as the economy is doing well. However, the U.S. economy was doing phenomenal in the 1920s. There was a huge, huge growth in the 1920s. It was called the Roaring Twenties. But there were three major flaws in the economy. The first was an uneven distribution of wealth. That meant the, the really wealthy had a lot of money and the really poor had very little. Um, there was overproduction by business and agriculture. Uh, an example of this is the amount of wheat that was being produced. We have a lot of wheat, and the more wheat you produce, the less value each stock of wheat has. Same thing with cars. We had a lot of car production. And the more cars you have, the less value each car can sell for. And because enough people had bought cars, there was a lessening demand for consumer goods. So there's nothing for these businesses to sell to. And here's a very famous political cartoon from 2006 where the U.S. economy has crashed. And that's what happens on Black Tuesday. On Black Tuesday in 1929, the stock market had a boom in prices. You can kind of see it going up, 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 up. It goes all the way up here to about 1929. And it shoots up again, all right? And then all of a sudden, and the reason that it was happening is they were buying on the margin. This is when you're actually buying on your credit card. Right here, you're going to buy values in stocks in 1927, and you're going to buy it even though you don't have the money. You're going to get a loan from your stockbroker, but you can pay it back because the stock's always going up. And this works as long as prices go up. But when the prices collapse on Tuesday, October 29th, this starts the Great Depression. And the Great Depression becomes a worldwide global depression because the U.S. decides to demand repayment of European loans. 
and they place high tariffs or taxes on foreign goods, and these other countries do the same thing. So this becomes global because we stop trading around the world. Here is a coffee and donuts. Here's a line in the U.S. Coffee and donuts for the unemployed, and you can see how many people are out of a job because of this because they've got no one to sell to, they got no one to buy to, and this happens uh, in Europe as well. So what happens is they realize that government needs to be involved, and they have direct intervention from the government in the economy. And here's a political cartoon of it. And the communists become more and more popular in Europe due to the failure of capitalism. Capitalism is viewed as a great failure. Look at the Great Depression. And the government starts to uh, spend, take direct control of the economy. And we actually copy this in the United States, and Great Britain does this, and France does this where you have massive government spending called the New Deal. And uh, most famously, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, our president right here, that was his slogan for a New Deal. That's his political campaign button. And this is criticized by capitalists because you've got the government spending massive amounts of money. So the way that these, uh, what, what caused the Great Depression was uh, the flaws in the U.S. economy. And how did these U.S. and U uh, European nations recover? Well, massive government spending. All right. Thanks. Bye.